This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You can take your seats. This is Rama Experience, the month of June edition. Day one, we're going to look at the miraculous today. Hallelujah. God has called us into a life where we can have expression of his nature. Expression of his presence. And the expression of his glory. He wants your life and my life to be an indication that the word of God is true. God wants people to look at your life and then they can believe that the word of God is true. That what God has said is true. Not because they read it from the Bible, but because they saw your life. And this edition of the Realm Experience will be looking at the miraculous. A life that supersedes the natural. A life where natural limitations cannot resist the expression of the goodness of God. God wants you to have manifestations that folks will look at and say, only God can do this. That someone could say this is the hand of God. For that to be a reality, we need to begin to have the revelation of the miraculous. That we are in the days where we can have miracles, signs, and wonders. The days of miracle did not end with the early church. The days of miracle, signs, and wonder continues in the life of people that have the revelation of the indwelling Christ. The days of miracles, signs, and wonder did not end with the early church. You can have miracles in your life. There are all kinds of miracles. There are miracles of healing. There are miracles of provision. There are miracles of supernatural protection. There are miracles of supernatural supply. There are all kinds of manifestations of the miraculous. Um, well, one of the reasons why a, a lot of people are not seeing the hand of God in their life, manifestations in their life, most people have, are yet to have the revelation of the miraculous, that the miraculous is for today. When you heard that the Reverend brought the bread for Elijah, it is true. When you heard that the water turned into wine, it is true. When you heard that Peter walked on the water even before he sank, you know, it is true. If you heard that Jesus walked on the sea, it is true. When you heard that the Red Sea parted into, the, into two and they walk on a dry ground, it is true. Those are the manifestations of the miraculous. But you see, a lot of people are yet to believe that God does miracles. And for me to see miracle, I need to create an atmosphere of faith. For me to see the miraculous, I need to create an atmosphere of faith. And that is why we need to have the revelation of the miraculous. That God is a miracle walking God. God is still doing miracles today. And one of the reasons why most people cannot believe in the miraculous is that most of them have not heard about it. And that is why I'm preaching it tonight. That the days of miracle signs and wonder is today. In Hebrews 13 verse 8. It said that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus is the same yesterday. Today and forever. You know there are people that say well I don't think it's going to happen for me. I don't know how it's going to happen. No, we know how it's going to happen. It's going to happen when I start acting on God's word. That's how the miraculous begins to happen. When I start acting on the word of God, I create an atmosphere where I can experience the expression of the goodness of God. 
I can decide to have continuous manifestation of the miraculous. I can decide to keep having expressions of the goodness of God. If I turn left, the goodness of God. If I turn right, the goodness of God. I can decide to have those manifestations. It's not magic. But can I say this to us? People decide what they receive from God. It is not God who decides what you receive. This may come like a shock. I said, it is not God who decides what you will receive. It is you. Jesus said, according to your faith. Most times when Jesus healed people, he said, according to your faith, they were the ones placing demand on the anointing on his life. Imagine that blind Bartimaeus never asked or never shouted out or cried out for help and start reaching out. He had the manifestation of a healing because he released his faith. It is not God who determines what you will receive. It is your faith in him that will determine what you will receive. I want to say this one more time. This will come like a surprise to people. Oh, God will do whatever he wants to do. Well, listen to this. It is not God who decides what you are going to receive. Because pertaining to life and godliness, God has given us all things. It is our faith that will begin to unlock the things. It is our faith in God that will begin to unlock the things that God wants us to experience. So it is not God that will do it. He has already done it in Christ Jesus. It is we that will receive it by faith. You want healing, you take it by faith. You want deliverance, you take it by faith. You want finances, you take it by faith. You want to see the miraculous, you take it by faith. And that was why the scripture said in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing. Faith comes. I've seen people that use their faith. Oh my God. When you heard their testimony, say, oh my God. If someone could ask, are we serving the same God? Yes, we're serving the same God, but there are dimensions of revelation that put their own destiny different from others. There are dimensions of lights they have. Lights they have about God. You can be a Christian and suffer through your life and die and go to heaven and never live a better life here. And that doesn't bother God. You know why? But turning to life and godliness, God has given us all things. And for me to begin to have the manifestation of all things, I need to renew my mind in the direction of the finished work. That is why there are things I don't believe. Somebody can come to me right now and say, oh, I see the devil doing this. I don't believe that. I believe the gospel. There are things I don't believe. Saying it to me is a waste of time. There are things telling me those things is a waste of time because I don't believe them. The finished work of Jesus is higher than every spiritual experience. I said the finished work of Jesus is higher than every spiritual experience. Every spiritual experience has to be subject to that finished work. You can never exalt any spiritual experience above the finished work of Jesus. It is an error. You cannot. The finished work of Jesus is the line. Every experience must fall in line with that finished work. If it doesn't line up with that finished work of Jesus, we're not expected to tolerate it. We're not expected to believe it. We're not expected to accept it. If you're not careful, you can run into deception. I have one of the sisters in church. I like her testimony. On, on Sunday, she was telling me she has been going through all kinds of financial crises. And then she will come and say things like, My finances are under attack. My finances are under attack. So I quickly rebuked her. I said, You can't be saying that. The more you say that, the more you have that. That's where a lot of people are where they are. The things they are saying is dominating their environment and then it's giving them the future of their declaration. I have to quickly stop her and then tell her what to be saying. Only for she to come back one week later and say, Pastor, I can see some changes in my finances. What happened? Knowledge changed the experience. Knowledge changed the experience. You cannot continue to say, my finances are under attack. My, my life is under attack. My, my marriage is under attack. My life is under attack. You cannot have a confection of attack and have a stress-free life. You will always have an attack. Those that have faith in attack will continue to have an attack. That's how it works. Those that have faith in attack will continue to have attack. 
those that have faith in the goodness of God will continue to have the expression of his goodness around them. The area where you have faith is the area where you have manifestations, expressions, and demonstrations. The area, so someone can consistently say, oh, I'm under attack. Oh, you know for some pastors, you know, our ministry is under attack. Oh, you, you have a confection of attack, so you continue to have an attack. Faith coming by what? By hearing. And fear also coming by what? By hearing. What you consistently say gives you an atmosphere. What you consistently say. Look at Jesus, a perfect example of a man who understood the power of conversation. A magic gospel of the fall was being tempted. And when Satan looked at Jesus and said, If you know you are the Son of God, turn the stones into dread. And he said, It is written. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. He had a revelation of the power of the word. The difference between you and those that will not make it in life will be the knowledge of God's word you have. And that is why we're having realm experience. The purpose is to train you to think like Jesus. The purpose is to train you to think from the dimension of the word of God. That is where to think from. If you think from any other area, there is going to be a collapse. There is going to be a limitation. Because the word of God was designed to be your advantage. The word of God was designed to be your advantage. You can live rich, you can live large. You can do big things in this life if you choose to. You can do things that your contemporaries will never do until they die. Why? Because you have revelation and light, inspiration. You have wisdom of God and you're putting them to work. You can do things in the midst of hardship, economic, economic pain and crisis that people are going through. But because you have understanding of the word. That the word of God works in famine. The word of God will work in desert. The word of God will walk in the wilderness. The word of God will walk in dry places. The word of God will walk any, in any environment. They say people don't succeed here. I come with the word I will succeed here. Why? Because the word of God have no respect for environment. Especially if you're led by the spirit into that place, you're going to succeed. Why? Because the word works. And that is what God is saying to us today. That we need to begin to have the mentality of the miraculous. A mentality that is superior to situation. That no matter what you're facing, God is on my side. That's the thing. No matter what you're facing. If this person says it's not going to help you, ooh, that person shouldn't bother you. You should get to a point where the help of man doesn't count. What counts is your help that you receive from God. You get to that point. You walk with God. God wants you to have your confidence in him and not your confidence in the flesh. Because in the flesh you can't make progress, but in the spirit you will rise above limitations. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Glory be to God. The revelation of the miraculous. Signs and wonders for today. Signs and wonder, miracles. God wants you to have the miraculous mentality. The mentality of the miraculous. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. And look at this. A man of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God, attested by God to you by miracle, by miracles. Signs and wonder. The old KJV said, A man approved of God were miracles, signs and wonders. That was all who Jesus was. And that is who he is today to us. That he has called us to have a life where we are always reigning in life. Death is not supposed to reign over you, sickness and disease is not supposed to reign over you. Poverty is not supposed to run over you. Why? Because in Christ Jesus, we have an inheritance. And this inheritance comes into manifestation when we choose to believe. You can be born again and think like the world. And think like people who don't know God. But you're born again. You can be born again, but you're limited in your thinking. I've seen Christians... Who confess the lordship of Jesus but doubt his ability? They confess that Jesus is Lord. They confess that God can do big things. 
And when the opportunity comes for them to use their faith, they divorce him. They say it's not possible. But the scripture said, with God, all things are possible. And here we saw that with miracles, with wonders and signs. And this is so unique about Jesus. And that is what your life should be. That when people look at your life, they say, wow, Jesus. They look at your life, they could see miracles. They could see signs. They could see manifestations of the spirit. They could see how, how your life is going from glory to glory. Your life shouldn't be a kind of life that I used to. No, our life should be Proverbs 4 verse 18. That's the scripture. It's at the part of the judge. But for we to have that reality, we need to have a continuous revelation of the word of God and we stay in the place of application of that revelation. That is what moves our lives. You know, uh, they, you don't have money in your pocket, you don't have anything around, you don't have finances. Uh, that is not who you are. Who you are is in Christ Jesus. And if you have a right confession, money will come. If you have the right confession, doors will open. And not you saying, I don't have the money. Not you saying, life is tough for me. I don't know what to do with my life. What to do with your life is to do the word. When there is darkness, void, and anything that you see that's not working, the first thing is to begin to use God's word to address it. To address it. To address it. Your problem, you start resolving your problem by speaking. That's how you solve your problem. You start resolving your problem by speaking the word. I uh, leave that speaking the word. What is speaking the word? I beg my hustle, go here. You go hustle until you hustle tire. It is speaking the word that creates an atmosphere where you can get help. When you speak God's word, you are inviting supernatural atmosphere into your situation. When you speak the word of God, you are inviting supernatural atmosphere into your situation. That's what makes you. How can you explain somebody? Who has nothing just came into a city with a vision to make a difference and only for you to hear five years later look at what he's doing look at what they're doing and somebody have lived in that city all his life but have nothing to show for it why he came with an expectation he came with a vision he has a prophetic word and he understand the power of declaration there is no disadvantage the only disadvantage is ignorance there is nobody here that has disadvantage. The only disadvantage is ignorance. The area where you're ignorant of God's word is the area of your disadvantage. But if you begin to have revelation in those areas and begin to take God's word and walk the word of God, what will happen? You start initiating change. By this time next year, this will be happening in my life. By this time next year, I'll be doing this in the name of Jesus. By this time next year, I'll be breaking forth in this area of life. By this time next year, your, your, prof, your future is in your mouth. You keep the prophecy going. You keep, that's how you see the miraculous. You keep the prophecy going. You keep the declaration going. Your faith can't rest on somebody. You got to rest your faith in God. And that is where your faith will walk. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The miraculous. God has called us to a life where we can see signs and wonder. All this crying at, in the night and weeping, cry and cry and cry. You are just wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Anybody here and you're hearing me and you just sit down, all you can do is to sit down to regret about all the wrong decisions you have made. Listen to this. Look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth was without form, void and darkness. But how did God step into that situation and made a difference the miraculous is in the speaking of the word and God said and God said he didn't sit down to begin to cry and get worried and be depressed and say I don't know what to do look at what the enemy is doing no, no what the enemy is doing is as a result of the ignorance of the saints what the enemy may be doing in anybody's life here, if you see the enemy messing up any part of your life, is because you have no knowledge in that area. Because if you have knowledge in that area, you will kick him out. The tendency of Satan end in any area of your life when you have revelation about that area. You end his tendency. It will not no longer occupy that area. I know what God's word said. Get out in the name of Jesus. 
But if you don't have knowledge, you will continue to cry. You know, somebody was sending me some prayers. You know, some people, some people, uh, you know, uh, like well, whatever somebody sends to you, I send back to sign that, you know, that kind of thing. And expecting me to say amen. I can't say amen. Oh, all those that are trying to kill you, they will die, and all this kind of thing. He doesn't get my attention. In him I live. In him I move. There are prayers that you can begin to say amen to the consciousness. Will, you're afraid. Maybe they won't kill you. Maybe they won't kill me. One is coming from pastors now. They won't kill me. Now you're having a mentality of death than life. He said, I've come that you have life. Huh? Are you reading your Bible at all? I've come that you have life and have it more abundantly. That should be the focus. So when somebody said, oh, you shall not die, those are not the focus. The focus that I came that you will have life. But life conscious, not death conscious. It's not death you're looking for. It's life you want to have. So keep the confession of life. If you're not keeping the confession of life, you'll begin to believe the lies. And Satan wants you to believe the lies. He wants to lie to you. Oh, I show you a dream where you are dying. Ah, I will die sooner. Show you a dream where this one is happening. Whatever dream you saw, according to what I told in the first session while I was teaching here, I started teaching, I told you that you have to use the finished work of Jesus as the bar. Anything that is not in line with the finished work, finished work out, I don't believe this one. This is not my reality. And those who think like that have a better health, they have a better finances, they have a better life. Why? Because the knowledge of the will of God should supersede your thinking. The knowledge of his will should supersede every thinking. Allowing the knowledge of his will to overtake you. You can't live in fear in the land of faith. You cannot live in fear in the land of faith. There are prayers I don't say amen to because I have no business with it. I cannot say amen to it. It doesn't matter who is praying it. I don't need it. Why would I say amen to something I know that I already have liberty from? Galatians 5 verse 1. It says, stand in the liberty where which Christ has made you free. You cannot walk in the miraculous. You cannot see the miraculous until you begin to have revelation knowledge. And that is why we're talking about the revelation of the miraculous today. That somebody needs to have the revelation of a life of miracles, signs, and wonder that you can see the power of God. Look at the scripture here in Luke Gospel chapter 10. In St. Luke Gospel chapter 10 from verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. In St. Luke Gospel 10 from verse 17, watch this. He said, and the 70 returned with joy. The servants who return with Jesus. Jesus have not died. Listen to this. When this testimony was shared, Jesus have not gone to the cross. And the servants who return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus have not died. They were having testimonies. Demons were subject. Jesus have not died. Demons were subject. Oh. Huh? From the NLT translation, he said, when the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to the Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Jesus have not died, but the demons obeyed. He hasn't died. He has not died. But the demons obeyed him. Obeyed those disciples. The demons obeyed the disciples of Jesus. But he has not gone to the cross. So if Jesus has not gone to the cross, his name was doing miracle signs and wonder. So why did he go to the cross? He has not gone to the cross. Look at the testimony. They came back. These men here have no Holy Ghost inside of them. In that time, the Spirit cannot come upon you. Because they were here, they were functioning from the old covenant dimension too. And we saw that he gave him, he gave them the, his name. He said, Go in my name. In my name, you cast out devil. They were casting out devils in his name. But he has not gone to the cross. The cross was more superior than the casting of uh, casting out of demons. That was not even why Jesus went to the cross. Jesus going to the cross was not about casting out devils. For that they were doing here already. He went to the cross as you can be a new creation. As you can be a new creation and live the God life. That's why I went to the cross. As your experience will line up with the will of God. 
as you experience it because six times that was why Jesus said I came that you have life and have it more abundantly why did he come he come that you have life and have it more abundantly abundant life is the will of God that's why he came that you will have life and have it more abundantly so you are not expected to live in fear you are not supposed you are not expected to project anxiety oh if you prosper who will kill you how he said, well, long life will God satisfy me. He said, no weapon form against you. As good as that scripture is, as I in the old covenant begin to see that there is no weapon form against us can prosper, against you can prosper. And you begin to understand that in Christ Jesus, you have liberty, you have protection, you have longevity. In Christ Jesus, you have liberty, protection, and longevity. You have liberty, you have protection, you have longevity. And that is why it's good to have the revelation of the miraculous that God wants me to have the manifestation of signs and wonders in my life. And here we read this scripture. Look at this. He said, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 18. And he said unto them, I saw Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to tramp on serpents and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you he said nothing shall by any means hurt you i give unto you power nothing and this is where you have to be they said the people are dying in this country will long life will god satisfy you you raise your bow with your confession if you project the spirit of fear, you'll be a victim of death. If you project the spirit of fear, you'll be a victim of death. If fear is coming out of you, it means you're making a trap for your life. If you're voicing at fear, you are voicing at death. Second, Second Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God have not given us the spirit of fear, the fear of financial future. The fear of where am I going to get the money to take care of these bills. The fear of what is my life going to be. If you project the spirit of fear, it will limit you from reaching your full possibilities. You know, sometimes being online, all kinds of news come, all kinds of messages all kinds of stupid, you know, I've, I've heard all kinds of crap. I said, what is this? What is this? Some will say, don't wear black clothes. Some will say, don't wear red. What kinds of things? Are we going to be naked? Don't wear this, don't wear that. I saw in a vision all kinds of things coming up. Read your Bible as you not be a victim of lying spirit. <clears throat> Read your Bible. As you know, be a victim of lying spirit. There are all kinds of things going on today in the body of Christ. That is going on in church. I pity for some people, or maybe some of you here, that don't read your Bible, that don't know the word of God, and you're always hanging out on Facebook with all kinds of trash, and they drop those trash with you, and then it forms your thinking. You need to know who to listen to. You need to know what to listen to. You need to know the purpose why you're listening. What are they saying? It's what they're saying is in line with the word of God. Because there are things you hear, you don't only hear it, it has a deposit or something in you. Information, things we hear, leaves us with a deposit. And that is why we're expected to judge what we're hearing. I can't just take whatever I hear. I hear. I need to judge it in the light of the word of God, in the light of the will of God. I need to judge what I'm hearing. Why? Because fear and faith comes by one thing. It comes by hearing. So what am I listening to? What am I listening to? Who is talking to me? Who am I giving attention to? I need to give my attention to the word of God. Not to how I feel. I need to give my attention. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20, said, my son, attend to my word. That's how to live your life. When the news is coming this way, it's coming that way. Man, you just stay with God. So this place is the place I get my breaking news. 
The worst will happen, but the best is for me. It doesn't matter where the worst happened, the best is for me. The goodness of God is after me. I am goodness of God minded. I am goodness of God minded. And this is the kind of mentality you're supposed to have. You're supposed to be goodness of God minded. I am goodness of God minded. As a believer, you are expected to be goodness of God minded. People say, oh, the economy is hard. You need to compromise. You need to steal to get money. You need to do this. Let me say this to you. There are people who are walking the word of God having better results. And God knows those who are of his. God knows people who are committed to him. God knows people who are calling him. He knows people that said, God, you are my source. They didn't just say it by confession. Their attitude, their commitment, their submission, their loyalty, their passion reflect that God is my source. And he takes care of them. He makes way for them. He comes for them. He supports them. He helps them rise. When God is your source, there is a dimension of rest you come into where you, be, you become a person who is in control. You're not living in fear concerning the future. The future is bright in Christ Jesus. The future is bright as you respond to the leadership of the Spirit. He leads you. Go this way. Don't pass this route today. Go this other side. Walk and pass this direction. Move this way. Go this other way. The Spirit is telling you what to do. And if there is any time to be led by the Spirit of God, it's now. If there is any time to be led by the Spirit, it's what? It's now. That you got to be led by the Holy Ghost. That the Spirit of God have to lead you. You can't go by your senses. The frustration will be high. You can't go by your calculation. The frustration will be high. But if you're led by the Spirit, your steps will be blessed. You're led by the Spirit. He may tell you, sit down here. But while he's telling you to sit down here, it doesn't look like anything is working out here. But he knows why he told you to sit down here because rain is coming there. He may tell you to sit down here. You don't know why he's telling you to sit down here. There is a rain coming there. When we're in the place of obedience, we're in the place of dominion. The revelation of the miraculous is what we're looking at. This realm experience, they want. If I'm led by the Spirit, I'll be in the will of God all the time. Is somebody here on this today? If you're led by the Spirit, you'll be where? You'll be in the will of God all the time. If you're led by the Spirit, you'll be in the will of God all the time. The will of God for you is more important than every other thing. It doesn't matter what people say. If you know the will of God, stick with it. They will come back to meet you there. Find out what the will of God is. is the key to the miraculous. You want to see miracles, signs and wonder happen to you. Find out what the will of God is. And how you're going to find out what the will of God is, is to renew your mind with God's word as you can be sensitive to his leading. And that is why God is teaching us about the revelation of the miraculous. That miracle signs and wonders is for today. The days of miracle have not passed. That you can see miracle in your life. You can see miracles of supernatural provision. You can see miracles of uncommon favor. Favor you have never seen before. They say it's difficult to get that thing. But let me say this to you. Once you have the revelation of the miraculous, nothing is difficult anymore. You may not have the finances, but if you have revelation, you're opening door for more resources. You may not have the finances, but if you can have revelation, a word from God telling you this is the way to go, that's what will make your life. That's what will make your life. A word from God. Miracles happen when people release their faith. Miracles happen when we believe what can you consider an impossible situation today in your life what can you see right now and say pastor this is an in impossible situation in my life I can't come out from this financial struggle I can't come out from this marital crisis I can't come out from this kind of problem mention what is impossible to you and then look for scriptures and match it 
and you will find out that what is impossible to you is possible to God. He said, Blessed is she that believe, Luke chapter 1, verse 45, that there will be performance of these things to have from the Lord. Blessed is the person who believes. There will be performance. One thing I've come to learn about God is that if you believe that He can, He will. If you believe that He cannot, no problem. But I've come to notice also that God has so much, so much. One thing is required to get them. Your faith, your obedience, being led by the Spirit. God has so much. So much of resources. So much of, see, he doesn't spend money. But do you know that God can bring a relationship into your life that can be putting money in your life? I was talking to somebody a few days back. I said, most people are rich not because of themselves. Somebody made them rich. Somebody carried them in their shoulder and said, stand on my shoulder and see. And that was how they went. It was not them. It was their loyalty. They were loyal to somebody. And the person trusted them and said, okay, stand on my shoulder. And from here you can fly. You can make progress. That is why when God wants to move you forward, he sends you good relationship. When you hear open doors, it's human being. When you hear that there is an open door, it is human being. When you hear that God will restore the years you have lost, one of the ways he restores it is to send the right people into your life to start helping you rise. That's how the restoration starts. When you hear that God will restore the years, all the years you have lost in this life, the things you didn't do well, he begin with sending people he begins by opening doors, using people to help you get to those manifestations. So God cannot walk in this realm without man. So man is a critical factor for the move of God in this natural, in this earth realm. And that is why whenever God wants to do something in your life, what he will do, he will send somebody. God wants to save the children of Israel. He sent somebody. His name is called Moses. God wants to help them build the wall. The, wall of, the walls of, of Jerusalem has gone down. He sent Nehemiah. Nehemiah came. They needed to have victory from them and God had to send Esther. Esther has to be there. Whenever God wants to do something, he's going to get a vessel. And your ability to align. You know the problem a lot of people, they are impatient. You know a lot of people, oh my God, hey, they take time. Oh, they take time. And desperation is the first step you take for personal betrayal. Write this and then and put asterisk on it. Desperation is the first step you take for personal betrayal. Desperation is the first step you take for personal betrayal. How do you betray yourself? It's when you are so desperate that you don't care about the will of God. You want to do your thing. So you start doing your thing. That's how you betray yourself from the harvest. That's how you betray yourself from the doors that God wanted to open. God was about to do something. But you can't wait. Ah, I don't wait tired. And it happens in ministry. It happens in business. It happens in ministry. It happens in life. God is trying to help them gradually. Little by little. He's building up. No, 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 no. I need to go to this place. I need to go to that place. And they just keep wasting time. Just keep wasting life. Man, I had opportunities to go to so many places in my life. You have not heard some of them. But they, when they come, I struck them out. I, I struck them out because I have known what the will of God is for me. I don't want to get myself into a journey that has no destination. The worst journey is a journey without destination. You keep going and never know when to stop, never know where to land, and you keep going no direction. A lot of people in patience have been the major reason for personal betrayal. They can't walk anything. They like already made. Ah, we are already made. You can say this to you. If you don't have a pioneering spirit, you cannot break new grounds. You must have a pioneering spirit. The ability to walk something. I believe in this thing. I believe in this vision. I believe in what God has come to do. I believe in what you cannot always look for where it's already done. You can't grow like that. 
That's why a lot of people went to places. Their life never amounted to anything. Their life was just like that. Ah, I'm in this place. This place is well clean. Everything is working perfectly. Everything is working perfectly in the place except their own life. Check them. Except their own life. Their own life is still where it is. Because they are afraid of taking the risk of breaking the ground. They are afraid of making commitment that will change their story. Nobody rises to the top without their willingness to contribute to their own destiny. Nobody. When God wants to change you sometimes, he gives you something. And sometimes in a, in a raw form, like a potential, he just drop it to you, you just take. And watch what you do with it. Watch what you do with it. Many people are running to go to Dubai. You have heard his story. You have heard his story. It was people's vision. They believe in their vision. You have more resources here than there. But they have leadership than here. <laughs> and when you have leadership, in like a church, if you have a pastor with strong leadership, with strong faith, that can do something, you will notice that that church will be making progress. You will notice that that church will be making progress. It's leadership. The person at the helm is ha he has a vision. He's pursuing it. But when you go to a place without leadership, you've gone to a place without progress. A nation without leadership is a nation mark for being backward. Because there is no leadership. So sometimes when God wants to open a door, he sends people into your life. And that is why you must learn to be led by the Spirit. If you want to see the miraculous, you need to be led by the Spirit. Let me say this to you. And this I'm saying to everybody with a sense of humility and a sense of love. If you're not careful with the offense, it will set your life so backward that it will be difficult for you to recover. These are things that will choke your destiny. I didn't say devil. Do you hear me say devil? I said if you're not careful with offense, it can choke your life. I didn't say devil. I just told you. You can't see the miraculous. You can't see signs and wonders. Because you think it must always go your way. Things must not always go your way. Sometimes things will go other people's way. But God will use it to help your own. You know when the Spirit of God is leading people into things. When the Holy Ghost is leading them into things. If I was not led by the Spirit, I won't be here. No way. No way, no way. I'm telling you, no way. No way. Every step, Lord, what are you saying? This way? Okay. We'll go that way. Come sign this one alpha. This way. If I notice I don't have peace about it, even if I've told you I will just abort it. There's an abortion of conversation. You know what I mean by that? Yes, we agreed, but he said I should not do it again. I'm sorry. I will no longer do it. Abortion of conversation. Hey, I want to keep my integrity. No, but my integrity is as good as when God has said keep it. <laughs> that's, that's, the only, that's the only way I can keep my integrity. God said don't do it. Don't do it. Even if you have gone to give your word to somebody, just apologize to them and withdraw that word. Why? Because your life may be at stake. A lot of people have used that word integrity and ruined your life. It's good to have integrity, but your integrity must be consistent with the remember what you're hearing. I can give you a word that I'm coming to preach for you. And then God told me, don't go to that meeting. I'll call you and say, no, if you come. I don't have the leading. It's not about, I'll give offering. Ah, I'll give offering. Who did they talk to you about offering? We're talking about life. Yeah, talking about offering. God said, don't go. Don't go. He said, no, I must go. How will the pastor feel? Are we talking about how somebody will feel? We're talking about what God's word is saying, not about how they will feel. I've made some tough decisions in this place. That both thought, Pastor, are you okay? I said, yes, sir. And then I turned back. I said, God, I thank you I made that decision. I thank you I made that decision. 
There are things God will tell you, don't do it. And it doesn't matter if everybody in this church agree that it must be done. If you say, I should not do it, I will not do it. The worst anybody could do is to use the door. That is, that's the worst. Nothing else they will do again. Because being in the will of God is for your safety and for the safety of those that are under you. Because one wrong step you will take can hurt you for life. I had a decision to make. That was last year. Something happened in this church. I had a decision. I said, Lord, what do I do? I went to him. I said, what do I do? He said, give them options. Drop the options for them. And you get the good result. I said, yes, sir. That's okay. Then I did what he said. And I was good. I was good. Imagine I followed pressure. If you want to walk with God, people pressure should not confess. His will will be number one. If you want to walk with God, though, people pressure was the reason why most men of God never got to their destination. What, what people will say, or what people will say, is it what people will say or what God has said, or they will criticize us, or they will talk about us, or them talking about us is just for one week or three weeks or one month. Have you noticed that every criticism will last only like two weeks? Have you noticed that when people are talking about you, it will not last for any matter that happens in life. One month, two weeks, three weeks, yeah, it will die off. Even if it's on Facebook, let there be a hit right now. Hey, everybody show it on Facebook everywhere. Just wait. After three weeks, it will just die. Everybody don't forget, they don't go move on. That's why you need to be led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> because what they are saying will not last for a very long time. And then because of what they will say, you decided to listen to them, and then you miss God for your life. And that was how death came to so many people. Any death, they will disobey God. The devil took advantage and caused crisis in their life. The fear of people should never take the place of the fear of God. Who heard me this evening? Huh? The fear of people, what people will say. It's not what people will say, it's what people cannot defend you. My brother, I was a dad had an experience. I don't know if I've shared it in this church before. I was coming from the uh, Obibo area, uh, you know, many years ago. I was school in Ekoma. I shared that story before here. And while I was coming back, I stopped at Garrison. And this young man just came, wanted to take advantage of me. Before then, the Holy Ghost said, Be alert. And you know in Port Harcourt, when they are robbing somebody, everybody's running. Have you been that situation before? People start moving. And the guy came to me at the afternoon, not night. This is not night. Afternoon, face to face. And he just told me, you the claim more. That's what he said. The next thing that came out of me, Malingra do Shatala Baba. He was speaking English, I was speaking in tongues. The more he looked at me, he was wondering, is he dealing with the spirit? He said, the reason why we're praying in tongues is not for a show. There are places you enter your tongue and pass that place. Kandelebo, Shangayaga, Mande Kamba. See, tongue is not for show. Tongue is for defense. There are troubles that come as you pray in the spirit. Man, the guy was talking in English. I was responding back in tongue. Everybody in that garrison have disappeared. They are afraid of the guy because they know him as a killer, as all kinds of things. But you know what happened? While I was tonguing, looking at him face to face, we were talking. He would talk in English, I was responding to him. An armed military man. I don't know where I was coming from. Armed. Armed. Heavily armed. I believe it was an angel. The fear of people should never take the place of the fear of God if you want to live long. Be willing to lose any relationship but never lose your relationship with God. Because your relationship with God can give you better relationship. I don't know what I'm communicating this evening. Because if you play along the people, they can abandon you. People can just abandon you one minute and they are all gone. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will always be there. The one that will always be there will be the one you should be making decisions to please. Mm, who heard me? Your decision should always be to please the one that will always be there. Pastor will not always be there. Your mother will not always be there. Your father will not always be there. 
Your cousins will always be there. But Jesus is the same yesterday to them forever. When you are lonely, when you are alone, when you nobody is calling you, he's there with you. That one is the one you'll be making decision to please. That is the person that anytime you make this one, make sure he pleases him first. Any other person can be, be settled later, but let him come first. And that's how you bring safety to your destiny. Safety to your destiny. You hear the voice of God who always say, You're correct. Ah, pastor said that, you know. Oh, the man of God said that, you know. How will you be correct? You'll be correct because you're late. The only way to be correct is to be late. The only way to be correct is what? Is to be led by the Spirit of God. And when you are led, the Holy Ghost may say, sit down. Do this. Do that. It's telling you. There are things God showed me that has not started to do. I'm telling you, church, it never starts. Many of you have gotten dreams of glimpse of what is going to happen. It, it's about to start. The rain, the prosperity rain itself have not, is just drizzling. When I go see the flood, there are things that God said. They will begin to land and folks will be asking questions. Like somebody was saying yesterday, he said, Pastor, even some of the members who criticize you. I was shocked when he said that. He said, when that day is coming, he said, ah, he should say this on a, on a clean, uh, you know, when, when you are poor, Everybody believes you're supposed to be poor. Amen. But when you are rich, you should be investigated. Don't be so. Eh? When you are poor, everybody is comfortable with you. Ah, say, this poor man. <laughs> this poor woman. Says. When you are poor, people are comfortable with you. When you are poor, you don't get anything. You didn't move anybody. Your neighbor passed. They don't know say pass. But when God begins to bless you, which I'm praying for you, because you must be blessed. I didn't hear your amen well. Amen. How many of you are afraid of people talking about you when you're blessed? Say, me, Pastor, I don't want to beg. I don't want people to talk about me. Then they talk about you since for this the level where you did that. They say, What why they trek up and dance? Why they walk like would they in the in they pray that church they go in there they walk for them? Why this area? People are already talking about so let's give them something better to talk about. Yes. You didn't hear me well. Uh, who had me now? <laughs> uh, who had me now? Let's give them something better. Ah, now you be this one, my sister. I no not know now you are seeing pass at this and another person. No, 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 no. That that God makes you a wonder. That God makes you like Joseph. Look at the story of Joseph. That when everybody gave up on Joseph, but God came for him. That God is coming for you. In this month of expansion and resort, God is coming for you. In the name of Jesus, he will come for you. And there is someone here, God is telling me to tell you, don't be afraid of the blessing because it is your right to be blessed. Don't be afraid of the blessing. Don't be afraid. If somebody come tomorrow and say, God let me to buy you Range Rover. Don't say, I bet the blood of Jesus, don't talk about it. Don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't, please, don't talk about it. Please, please, please. Don't go that side. Don't go that side. Find me one to get to get something, please. Anything. Anything. Anything manageable that my neighbors will be comfortable. Are you here to make your neighbors comfortable or you're here to enjoy the goodness of God? What are you here to do? <laughs> All these years that you have been toiling with life, you have been struggling with life, you have been going through many things, so there should be a harvest that should compensate those years of toiling. I believe that if a man have toiled, God's supposed to bless him. Huh? That's what I think. That, that's my take. That God begins to put things in your life. That sometimes you wake up and say to them, I'm not going that. I want to sleep from morning till night. And nobody will call you and say, why I sleep like that? Huh? Nobody will come and say, Ah, why are you not in the office? Why are you not sleep? today? I decided to sleep from morning till night. They sleep because there is money in your account, there is rice in the house, there are food items, there is money for school fees. Am I talking to somebody right now? You are living in a comfortable home that you are built or somewhere you want to be. You're okay with yourself. I said, Today I need to. Re-. Do you know when I, I was living with my mother? As, a, uh, as we are growing up, sometimes because we go to market every day, including mo- Sunday, I say, which day in my life will we just stay like this on Sunday? We did not go to market. 
on Sunday. Sunday, neighbors are resting. We have other neighbors in the same company that do the same business with you. But we, we must go from Monday to Sunday. We can never, who give monkey banana to say you not go on Sunday? Who? Who? You must go. If rain, therefore, you be pushed at go to market. Carry marketing. Go stay the cell. On Sunday. So I will, sometimes I'll be so angry. I will be depressed. I will be frustrated. But I cannot solve the problem. <laughs> Whether I'm depressed for one year, that's my business. Whether I'm frustrated for two years, that's my business. But I cannot change it because I don't have the finances to give to my mother, to give to the family. Say, so let us rest today. Let's sleep. No. Even if rain is falling, you're going to the market to sell. We were like that. But when I came to Jesus, I noticed it was not supposed to be like that. It was like that because of the knowledge I have. They don't believe in favor. You don't believe that somebody can walk up to you and say, yesterday night I was praying and God said I should give you this 10,000 pounds. Don't believe in that. They don't believe that God spoke to me to give you 100,000. Hmm. We believe that everything you will work for it, you have to sweat to get it. You cannot sweat for everything. Some things should come to you freely. Didn't hear me well. Some things should come to you freely. A friend told me this, I will never forget. He said, if you wait to work for everything, you will have gray hair before some things come. So some things should just come to you. Some things should happen for you. Huh? Not because you did everything right, but because God decided to show him favor on you. Huh? Because God decided to have mercy on you. And that is what I'm talking about today. Part of it is the miraculous. That God will do things around you that when you turn, he said, this is the hand of God. When you turn, he said, this is the hand of God. When you turn, you know that the God is the one doing this. The hand of God is doing this. You cannot work for everything. Some things should just work for you. Some favors should just come for you. Some things should be paid for you. You cannot buy all your things. Amen? Some things should be paid for you. Somebody should wake up the one and call you and say, how is your day going today? I'm going to send you 100,000 naira. It should happen for you. Nobody said amen. Mm. Pastor. Pastor, why are you saying that kind of thing now? Don't say like that too. What can I say? Let me say it again. You wake up in the morning and somebody just called you. And they called you and said, Do you know for the past one week, like somebody was sharing a testimony with me, that somebody just called me and said, You today, I remember you. Take money. That you can have favor. Always expect a miracle. Always do what? Expect a miracle. Every day, expect a miracle. Every day, expect God to do something. If the budget is high, release your faith for more harvest. If the budget is high, do what? Release your faith for more what? For more harvest. With God, all things are possible. If the budget is high, see God working miracles for you. Every day, see God working miracles for you. Wake up every day and say, today I will see miracles. Today I will see signs and wonders. Amen? Today I will see miracles. What am I going to see today? I will see miracles of provision. I will see miracles of favor. I will see miracles of increase. The things they said you couldn't do, grace is coming upon you to do it. I said the things they said you couldn't do, grace is coming upon you to do it. The grace of God is taking you beyond every point of limitation in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you today that in this month of June, it is the month of expansion with results. So God will give you expansion with results. Expansion. Your life will be a testimony of a man that God has helped. Yes, so. Yes, so. This is somebody's testimony right now. Your life will be a testimony of a man who God has helped. Do you know when God begins to help you, some people say will begin to doubt it. How can, how can that happen? How can this happen? Heard a testimony one day. And the people that are involved in it, I know them. One of them called his friend. His friend had a challenge to buy a place, but he didn't have the money. Called him and wrote him a check for 100 million naira. Hmm. Not a loan, not a borrow, a gift. Hundred million. It's I'm sowing this into your life. Which company paid that gratuity? 
Talk to me. Do you know that favor is a currency? You know, a lot of people, see, most, sorry to say this, a lot of us eh, don't believe that we can have a wealth transfer. We believe that we have to work for everything. And because of that thinking, that is what is happening to most of us. You cannot work for everything. Some things will be worked and be given to you. It's called an inheritance. When Jesus needed or uh, wanted to do a miracle to feed the people, what happened? There was a lad there. At least the lad started something. Five loaves, small, two small fishes. He lifted up the bread, he gave them. There should be a lad in your life with the bread. Those are miracle moments. When the love showed off, it doesn't look like miracle. But that is where the miracle will start from. There is something called favor, church. Church, there is something called what? Favor. Favor is the reason why people will just tell you, I will take care of this and not bother about it. Favor is a preference. And it's in the realm of the miraculous. Favor is in the realm of the miraculous. Favor is in the realm of the miraculous. Things just happen for you. Things just happen for you. How did you get that? People are passing, they are not seeing it. Somebody just called it, take it. And that is why you need to spend time with God. That is why you need to put the word of God first. This is the month of June. Now we are in the second half of the year. The things you have not been able to do this year, receive the grace to kickstart the miracles. That this month of June will be expansion. What you have been dreaming about. You know one thing about this our church? We can just stay and dream something. And they say it's not easy. It's going to take so much money. We say, oh God, all things are possible. And our faith begins to go. 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 And the next is to bam, it takes it. It takes it. It takes it. And that is actually for you. It's not about where you walk, it's about the supply of heaven. Don't be using where you walk to brag. Use God to brag. My God will supply. Did you hear Paul said, Oh, you know, because I, I have PhD in law, because I'm a professor in law, because I know this, that's why my life will work. No, he said, My God, he, he said, he, he said, he, he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Look at his confession. Look at his confession. My God will supply all your need. Look at the confessions. Look at the confession. God is able to make all grace abound towards me that I'm always having. It was Paul that was saying that. I'm always having, always having. Receive that as a remnant. I'm always having. Write it down in your book. I'm always having. I'm always having. We are always having favor. We are always having preferential treatment. I'm always having open doors. And this month of June, expect expansion with results. Expect expansion with results. Expect expansion with results. You will use small things and turn them into big things. Yes, yes. That's the prayer the man of God prayed for me several days. You will use small things and you will turn them into big things. Things that people will consider as nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. The things you used to say, ah, I, I can't do without this. Days are coming, you turn them to seed. I didn't hear your amen well. Though. I didn't hear your amen well. Though. I didn't hear your amen well. Though. God will use you to bring somebody's dream to pass. I didn't hear better amen. I say God will use you huh, to bring somebody's dream to pass. And God will use somebody to bring your own dream to pass. There are dreams you have in this life. There are people God will send to help you bring those dreams to pass. And there are people you, you will go and bring their own dreams. And I sometimes notice, when you are helping to bring the dreams of others to come to pass, God starts sending you people that will help you bring your own dream to come to pass. Hallelujah. Am I hearing somebody here today? The days are coming that some of you will buy can give it out as an offering. 
I didn't hear that amen well. Did I hear that amen well? Okay, I'm talking to myself. I said, the days will come. You will buy a car and give it as an offering. Yes, the days will come. The days will come, you buy a land and give it as an offering. Yes. Somebody said, Pastor, have you done that? Yes. I've done that. At least I've done that two times. I did one on Sunday to somebody. Because has been working for me for many years. He's not a member of this church. I said, you will take that one as your own. You cannot sow land and not have lands. There are seeds to sow. I want you to begin to enlarge your sowing capacity. Yes. I want you to begin to enlarge it. God wants to move you high. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But God wants to move somebody here high. But you need to break some limitations. Things that may be holding you. And you say to yourself, man, I'm moving into deep, deep waters. I'm, I'm stepping into something big. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at those football fans who are rejoicing for the club that won. They don't even know them. They will not even give them anything. Some even died. Some even were shouting until they went and injured themselves. If they share the money, keep sharing it, it will never get to their lineage. None of their sisters is married to that thing. To a member of that thing. No, no, nobody from their village. They were happy, just being happy. That's not the kind of happiness you have. The happiness you have will come with a treasure. God will put a treasure on it and you will look at your life and say, hey, there is something to shout for. If you believe me, rise. I'm beginning to shout like somebody who have received a harvest. Somebody who have received a harvest. Somebody who have received a harvest. If you know you have received a harvest, somebody shout here. Shout here tonight. Shout. You know that God has done it for you. Shout. Shout. You know that God has done it for you. Shout. Give him a shout of praise. A shout of jubilee. A shout of praise. A shout of jubilee. God has done it. God has fixed it. God is doing it. He will put treasures in your life. He will put treasures in your life. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you that this month of jubilee. This month of expansion will profit. Expansion with results. May you see expansion in your life. May areas where you have been asking God to intervene, may He come speedily in the name of Jesus. May the things you're believing God for, may you see a quick transformation. May somebody you're praying for that God will change your life. May they encounter change from now. In the name of Jesus. This month you will end well. This month you have a testimony. This month you have a testimony. I said this month you have a testimony. I said this month you have a testimony. God will give you a testimony this month. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy that you have so much to show. You have so much to thank God for. You have so much to praise God for. Let doors begin to open for you right now. Let people begin to come, the right people, that will show you things in the name of Jesus. May God reward you with the gift of men. May God reward you with the gift of divine connection. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will take steps that will lead to reward of harvest. Reward of harvest. Harvest is coming. That project you have been afraid of, receive grace to finish it. Receive grace to finish it in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, receive revelation of seed to sow that will move you to the next dimension of your life. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that the wind of God's favor will overtake you. In the name of Jesus, may your life be a life of continuous miracles, continuous favor, continuous open door. I prophesy that this month of June is a month of beginning of big things in your life. 
In the name of Jesus. Opportunities that people are looking for will look for you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you that helpers will locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the grace to read your word. Receive the grace to pray. Receive the grace to meditate on God's word. Your passion for the things of the spirit may it rise on that dimension. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Glory be to God. Before we round up this service, tomorrow we are going to be here for a